freaking first cut. Golly. Welcome to the First Cut Podcast. I'm Rick Gaiman, and this is your recap episode for this week's Worldwide Technology Championship. Joining me to break it all down, Patrick McDonald is here. Patrick, good day. Good day. Hope uh, everyone had a great weekend, a great finish there down in Mexico. The really tight and narrow El Carter now. Uh, it's set up for some great theater down the stretch. Uh, I th- I think I said a little bit of sarcasm in there. Greg Ducharme is here. Greg, the, the part that Patrick got right, and we were kind of talking about this before we went hot, is it, it was a good finish. You could argue whether 27 under par is the winning score that you want, whether 67 greens in regulation is, is the route that you want to go in a PGA Tour event. But with a few holes to go, there were legitimately three or four guys in the mix. I had no clue which one of them was going to win. It ended up being an exciting finish. The last hour of this event was awesome. Uh, the setup and the rest of it. Look, I, I'm not a big, I don't worry too much about the, the actual final score, uh, but there's definitely something to the, the shot values and the way that the, the way it unfolds. So I think if you look a little deeper, I'm okay with 27 under par. It was unbelievable golf, um, but it is, it, it's something else to, you know, picture being in the final group shooting 28 on the last nine and ending up with a, the putt to 428 is the putt to win, you know, and you're thinking it's to win by one. So it was a, a, absolutely a birdie fest. And the guys in the last group made a ton of birdies. Yeah, there were some eye-popping numbers. Uh, Patrick, you were saying who at Adam Long did not miss a fairway all week. Is that an accurate statement? Yeah, more like Adam accurate. Am I right? Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> thank Good you. Fun. Thank you. You got us. So. Mm-hmm. I'm here all week. Yeah. Didn't miss a single fairway. Who hit 67 greens, Greg? Uh, 67 greens. That, oh, shoot. I had that up earlier. And Actually, then I Justin went to the saw. fairways. Justin saw. Justin saw hit 57. Yeah. 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 I just couldn't remember. Um, you told me earlier. 67. 67. Yeah, I was looking at this too. I, I love looking at the, um, you know, the the stat center and and the rankings and certain stats, especially a week like this. You know, if you hit, if you hit sixty greens, well, let me say it differently. If you hit fifty nine greens of regulation, <laughs> you were you were tied forty first. Yeah. <laughs> Which, 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 by the way, is basically hitting 15 out of 18 a day. So if there were 40 players who hit 60 or more greens this week yeah. and the fairways is incredible, too. This is absolutely outrageous. Um, if you hit 49 out of 56 fairways this week, you were tied 57. 56 players hit 50 or more fairways. The, I mean, you're talking about, you're you're talking about uh, 48 players hitting 91 percent of their fairways or more. The cumulative driving accuracy number was 388 out of 410, which is 94.6 percent <laughs> field. 94.6 percent played out of the fairway. <laughs> I, I I mean it's outrageous. That Tiger Woods, he, <laughs> he knows a, how to design them. He's a generous architect, oh. isn't he? Yeah, that I mean there's a ton of space out there. Now I can understand why to a degree. I mean there are other things you could do. Yeah, obviously is designing this for resort guests. So I, I'm not knocking Tiger at all. But the areas around the fairways are you know lost ball areas, and it's. Not very fun to when you're playing to hit it in there and it's gone. You know, so I, I understand giving them giving the players some space. There was some slope and there's some wind. I I understand it. It just doesn't necessarily co- create the most compelling uh PGA tour competition. 
Although the finish turned out great this week. Yeah, that's that's kind of the, the crazy part in all this is that it did come down to the wire. And on a Sunday where Camilo Vijegas and Matt Kuchar entered as co-favorites, neither of them hoisted the trophy because Patrick, that went to Eric Van Royen. A Sunday 63, it was a Saturday 66, a Friday 64, and a Thursday 68 that he capped with a final 9-28 including an eagle on the final hole to win by two shots and capture his second career PGA Tour victory. He really was a bit of an afterthought going into that inward half. You had Camillo kind of fending off Kuchar. Kuchar makes a birdie on the 10th, and then they go to the par five. And I, I kind of felt like on, on the 14th, it was like, oh, Camillo with, with that tee shot. Kuchar grabs a two-stroke lead. With only four holes to play, you're going to have to do something pretty dumb around a golf course that Greg just laid out. It's <laughs> pretty hard to do something dumb around that golf course uh, for him not to win that event. But then Ben Royan really just started rolling him in and with, with confidence. They mentioned it on the broadcast often, just the look in his eyes. You could see how calm he was. And you looked at Kuchar's pace on the greens. He was coming up short with a few putts. And he was rolling his in with the perfect pace, uh, perfect drip speed. And you have it there on the par 3 16th, another on the 17th to, to turn the par 5 finisher into a true match play situation where he was tied for the lead all of a sudden. And maybe a nervy swing off the tee. Uh, whoever was on the ground there said he, he didn't really catch the driving iron fully, but it, it ended up being a perfect number because he had 290 in for a second just laced a fairway wood up there, took a great bounce, settled about 20 feet, and really poured it in. I mean, he just looked so confident and so calm throughout that back nine. And I know Josh mentioned to us, uh, you know, who would have thought we'd seen a back nine 28 uh, after what we saw Hovland do at the BMW Championship. But it was all out impressive. And no, no matter what the course is, back nine 28, you're, you're looking down a barrel of a gun trying to win a PGA Tour tournament. It's really gutsy stuff. One putt on 10, one on 11, one on 12, two on 13, one on 14, two on 15, and then one single putt each on 16, 17, 18, 11 putts on his inward nine on Sunday. Greg, that goes a long way when coming into the week, you were finding your uh, long game. The ball striking numbers were rounding into form, and then he married it all up this time around. And, you know, you know, a week like this is going to turn into a putting contest. Um, and and it it did. It really wasn't a con as much of a bomber's paradise as as we thought. Um, and and it, many of the reasons are you're able to hit a driving iron off the tee on 18. If you have to hit a three wood or a driver, it's not really a big deal. So um, it didn't really separate out in distance the way that we thought it would. But the ultimately, like you said, regardless of the golf course, Patrick, um, there's nothing more he could have done. 11 putts on the last nine is flawless golf, right? The the sh second shot into 18 rolls right. I mean, it's right on line with the flag and it almost, you know, it gives it a look. It, it was a perfect shot. And the putts that he behold were perfect putts with the perfect speed and right on line going dead center. And, you know, it's not very often you see somebody in the zone like that. And he just had that look like, all right, I know where I'm going to hit the ball. I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And every single shot is going right at the flag. I mean, they all did, whether they ended up 20 feet or not, they were coming they, from his view. They must've looked like they were coming right down the chimney. <laughs> one after another it, it's so fun to watch and you know you think okay well eric van royen is number 125 on the fedex cup coming in and this is the you know a, a really big moment for a bubble boy but you realize that uh that's probably the last thing on his mind this week so there was there was a lot to play for for him and he stepped up 
Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad Greg mentioned it. 125 in the FedEx Cup, uh, Cup standings coming into the week. He, he jumps up to 60, 63rd, uh, Patrick. But the the win gets him uh, two years. The win gets him everything that comes with winning on the PGA Tour. So to to take care of that with just a couple of events here left in the fall uh, certainly does a lot for job security. It's huge. Yeah. Major championship implications. You're into the signature events for all of 2024 as well. So just one win. We've seen it already this fall can really change the trajectory of your career. And uh, for him to get it done in the manner of which he did is just, as we've uh, already said, it is just really, really impressive. And that trajectory, Greg, we, I'm sure we talked about this on, on Monday, you know, EVR really struggled through much of 2023, but started to put to put it together late, finished eighth at the Omega Masters, 16th at the Irish Open. And then when he started his fall swing here on the PGA Tour in Napa, it was a T30, a T16 at the Sanderson Farms, another top 25 in Vegas. So this has been brewing for a couple of weeks now. And then like we talk about all the time. Yeah. You, you had a one to the end of that and we probably should have all seen this coming. Right. And, um, you know, to see a win coming is one thing. I, I think we expected him to play well and we talked about it on Monday as well, but you, I mean, since the end of the PGA tour season last year, since the Wyndham all top 30 finishes, uh, gained strokes in both, both off the tee and approaching the green in all of those events. And, this was not the case for him really for uh, at least a full season. And he, and then even before that, you look back to 2021, 2020, this is not a, a, a T to green kind of robot, right? This is a, a guy who can struggle a little bit T to green, despite that beautiful golf swing. And now we've seen over the last say five or five or six weeks, it's just been on point and he trusted it. And, uh, and all of a sudden he's in this situation where he's playing for a lot more than his FedEx cup standings, a lot more than the two year exemption. You know, he's playing for his friend who, who doesn't have much time left and, uh, and he's able to step up and, you know, go, go visit him with a, with a trophy in hand. Yeah, very emotional. Eric Van Royen uh, post round uh, reiterating that uh, a lot of things that are bigger than golf this week, Patrick, and he was kind of able to use that to um, remove himself from the ups and downs of a round that didn't start particularly well. He makes bogey on number one, a par five. He, he makes the turn in just one under in a birdie fest. I mean, he almost has to shoot a 28 or a 29 on his second nine to win. And and, and he kind of thought, yeah, there's wh why not? There's, there's a lot, there's a lot of other things going on right now. It was a real almost go for broke mentality coming in. And, and the quote is, when you're playing for something bigger than winning some silly little trophy, it puts it into perspective. And at the end of the day, whether I won here or whether I lost here, it really didn't matter. When something motivates you like that, whether you make the putt or miss the putt, who cares? And to kind of have that in your corner, have someone you're playing for much more than golf uh, and for you to channel in a way where it frees up your golf game and like Greg said, uh, it, everything was right down the chimney coming down the stretch. And it, it really, uh, really put a bow on a great week and made for makes for a, a really great story. Yeah, that's the win number two for Eric Van Royen on the PGA Tour. His first win, gentlemen, anyone, anyone? Ooh. Uh, bar, Ooh no. uh, yeah. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> 2021 Barracuda, he beat Andrew Putnam by five points because remember and, that's Stableford. And that's what got him on a run that carried him all the way to the tour championship, if I remember correctly. Yeah, that's right. So he wins the Barracuda T37 at the Wyndham. Then he goes seventh in Memphis, fifth at the BMW championship, gets himself into East Lake, uh, finishes T22. Yes, that was he sprinted to the finish line at the end of the 2021 season. That is correct. Congratulations, uh, EVR, back in the winner's circle. Uh, a pair of gentlemen here in the runner-up spot, Camilo Vijegas, Matt Kuchar. Let's start with Kuchar because uh, this tournament was mostly his for the, for the vast majority, including 
uh, a 29 of his own going out on Saturday, Patrick, and then gets on 59 watch by birdieing 12, 13, and 14 before making a quadruple bogey eight on 15, another bogey on 16, and entered the final round tied for the lead instead of being four or five shots clear. I may have to take full responsibility uh, for that stretch of holes for Matt Kuchar. I put into our Slack channel. I was like, hey, are we going to want to do a recap of this round? What are we thinking content-wise? Editor comes back. He's like, what's going on? I'm like, Kuch has a five-stroke lead. I look back at my phone. He goes, Kuch, Kuchar's lead is gone. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, he has to look back at, at this weekend and be like, how I really should have won this tournament. He's standing on the 15th tee with a two-stroke lead. Two-stroke lead with four holes to play on a golf course that really doesn't have any trouble at all. You think he can kind of cruise to victory, and then you just got a freaking freight train come out of nowhere, an EVR, <laughs> uh, breathing down your neck and leapfrogging you. And the stroke on 17 was pretty suspect, I think, after EVR poured that one in. Uh, before him and then the second shot into 18 wasn't great either i thought honestly after the tee shots on 18 i had my gamer written up i had the kuchar win i had win number 10 the ghost of l2 can mm. can be put to bed uh but clearly l2 can struck back this week and uh for, for kuch for the 45 year old kuchar it would have been a big win i mean for everything that evr got that easily could have been kuchar and uh for him to kind of let this slip through his grasp, I, I think it's really going to hurt. Yeah, put that put that gamer on ice for a bit. And uh, Greg, Patrick's uh, observation, the, the four pars coming in statistically loses him about a shot and a half to the field by just playing those at level par because of how gettable each of 15, 16, 17, and especially 18 were. So there's a shot and a half, the the quad, and then following it up with a bogey on Saturday. Kucher is going to walk away here with a runner-up finish, a T2, and it has got to feel like this one was absolutely his. You, get, you absolutely gave it away. Absolutely gave it away. You mentioned the putting stat of EVR with 11 putts on the uh, on the back nine. Well, in Matt Kuchar's Saturday round, all 18 holes, he had 21 putts. Wow. Now, this is, that's what puts you on 59 watch. But at the same time, you have 21 putts and shoot 67. And it feels really disappointing. You know, so there's there's great things from this. And there's really disappointing things from this. But I, I just got the sense when he's standing on 15T with the two-shot lead that the mindset shifted to, well, don't do anything stupid. Yeah. Right? Don't, Pre don't prevent give defense. This away. It, it, it went prevent defense. So we're going to play to safe side. And he didn't have a good birdie look the rest of the way in. Mm -hmm. Seven, well, I mean, I guess he did on... Uh, on what was it? 16, 16 is the par three, 17 from 17. the divot. Use the back slope. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. he had a really good shot there. That was seven. That's the one I'm thinking of. And Camilo and EVR both make, and he gives it a really weak effort, uh, but that was really the only great look he had coming down the stretch. And it, it was just a very clear shift to me where, okay, I got this under control everything's going my way. I'm not going to mess this up. Big greens, big fairways. This is mine. And then all of a sudden it's not because you realize in an event like this, that, um, well, pars are mistakes, <laughs> yeah, right? It, it's, yeah. it's not a typical, you know, a major championship where hey, pars are a good thing. Pars are not a good thing. And you really have to, if you're in this situation, for any other birdie fest that we see on the PGA tour next year, especially you got to be saying, Hey, I, I need to make birdies because pars are mistakes. Uh, and, and Kuchar learned that lesson the hard way today. 
Yeah, Kucher's uh, lead in form, Patrick. It, it's it's kind of been all over the place, right? I mean, it's it's a less consistent Matt Kucher at this point of his career, but he did play well in Napa. He went over and played the Andalusia Masters, had a top twenty there, and then despite this being a different golf course, um, he's always played well in in Cabo. So Kucher is kind of in this like really awkward spot on the PGA tour, right? You said he's 45. He could still contend depending on what golf course or what format here. But a lot of times he's just outclassed. He's got five years before he can go and dominate on the champion store, which I'm sure he is going to do. It's, it's just kind of a really awkward time for him. He's in purgatory <laughs> and there's really nothing he can do. He is, he got up to number 66 this week in the FedEx cup. So you think a sea Island guy or formerly a sea Island guy, I believe he'll be at the RSM and he'll have a chance to play himself inside the top 60 and, you know, maybe get inside those uh, two uh, signature events. And he's always played well at Riviera, I believe. So it's, he's got to pick and choose his spots, but he doesn't really have the luxury of doing that. So like you said, Rick, it's, it's just in between a rock and a hard place for him. Yeah. It's no man's land. No man's land. Well, we're going to continue this conversation. We have a lot more names to talk about and a lot more to break down. But first, we're going to take a quick break and hear a word from our partners. We need the sports news anywhere. We've got breaking news to bring you. Then get your sports anytime you want them. Big trade news overnight to discuss. Because we know you need sports all the time. A lot of movement in the rankings this week. A legend adds to their legacy. We're bringing you that breaking news right here on HQ. CBS Sports HQ anywhere, anytime, all the time. And we're back. The man tied with Matt Kuchar in that runner-up position was Camilo Vijegas. Goes 64, 64, 69, 66. The problem, Greg, Sunday holes 7 to 16. Uh, he made 10 consecutive pars. We have already discussed that the scoring was outrageous, including nearly five strokes under par on average on Sunday. Five strokes under par, which means if you shot a 67 on Sunday, you barely, barely made up uh, ground to the field. To make 10 straight pars in that moment of the event is, is just not, it is never going to win here. Nope. Um, and you had it, he still had a chance to win, which was pretty, pretty cool. So I, I thought he uh, fought really hard. I thought he stayed in the race. Uh, he was fortunate to make par at number 14. I mean, very fortunate. That was one of the rare mistakes that we saw from the entire field off the tee all week. Uh, and, and he's able to salvage a five there, which feels like a bogey, uh, on, was it 12? I believe it was 12. He had a really good look. He and Kucher both hit great shots in there and he just didn't hit a great putt and miss from about five feet. Uh, and that was a disappointing one. And I feel like the, a putt like that going in could have really sparked some momentum and it didn't. So all of a sudden he's in this situation, he's fighting hard, but, but not really there. He makes a great putt at 17 to put himself in the mix and hits a, Awesome shot into 18. Those two shots that Eric Van Royen hit and Camilo Vajegas hit were awesome. Yeah. Uh, um, and, and it, you know, it kind of kicks left and then catches the slope to the right and feeds down towards the hole. And he has a, he has a look at it, but unfortunately by the time he hit his putt, it, it didn't matter. Um, it was just a matter of whether or not there was a T in front of the two or not. So uh, disappointing stuff, but uh, Camilo has not played a lot of golf uh, lately. He played 10 events before this one this year and only made three cuts. So this is really uh, out of nowhere. And to add a T2 to the resume is significant. Yeah, the golf that he has played has been basically Corn Ferry Tour golf, uh, Patrick. So it, it is it is certainly go going a long way for him to pile up these points. And Josh, I don't do we have the updated FedEx Cup fall? I can't imagine he is broken into the top ten there. But this is a chunk of momentum. There's a couple of events left, and you know maybe he can make something out of the final the final two cracks at it. He um I I have it right. He moved to one forty seventh. Yeah, so still. Yeah, a long way back. But getting inside the top 150 at least gets you starts. Yeah, and then 125 is another magic number, right? And then, like, you know, he doesn't have to get to 51 to 60. Right, right. He yeah. wants to get inside 125. 
Right, and he's okay. got two weeks to do it. I, I was on, I was on the uh, the official. The live one has Kucher 52nd. So shame on me. I retract my prior statement on that. Uh, he is inside the, the green zone to steal a term from the TGL. But you look at Camillo, uh, Camillo he's only got 11 starts because he's playing on the past champions category. Right. If if he somehow gets this win, you get the two year exemption. Uh, it would have been his first win since 2014. This is his first top 10 mm-hmm. since the 2021 Honda Classic. So, like you said, Greg, really just completely out of nowhere. Uh, yeah. Not a ton of form at all. I think Data Golf has him like 450th in in their system. Just no form, no nothing, and it it easily could have changed this week if. Uh, he just made a few putts during that middle portion. He kind of fell asleep, and then right when Kucher applied a little pressure, he, he had the adrenaline pump in, I think, a little bit. Uh, you saw it in the veins, at least, where he got quick off uh, off the tee on 14, and he, he was very lucky to even find that ball, take it unplayable. And like you said, Greg, a very good par there to kind of keep himself in it. But you can't be making pars on par fives on the back nine at this golf tournament and expect to keep pace. And at that point it was just, you know, he put himself behind the eight ball too much, but if not for EVR, this probably Camilla winning this tournament probably would have been, I think the story of the year in, in golf. Uh, I mean, Chris Kirk winning at the Honda classic was a great one as well. Uh, I would put this one right up there with it, with everything he and his family have gone through the tragedy with their little girl and for him to come back and, you know, win a tournament like this and, get that two year exemption where the past champions has only allowed him 11 starts. It would have made a, you know, would have been very cool. Updated FedEx cup fall standings. Kucher moves to 52nd, Mac Hughes to 53rd. Sam Ryder jumps in. He goes from 63rd to 59th, dropping out Luke list, Thomas Dietrich, and then EVR has gotten himself right on the verge of the number now 63rd although i guess he doesn't really i guess it, he doesn't need it right he's got the he's got the two year he doesn't he doesn't care he's not right gonna, he's not gonna play the rest of the fall yeah so don't worry yeah. about him he's got he's got everything he needs <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah he's good uh, to go uh bo hostler continues to maintain his lead at the top anything uh anything super noteworthy here gregors where did uh where has Ludwig moved to? God, yeah, we're gonna talk about him next. Um, he is 95th. Jeez, how is that possible? It it's um well, he's played so little. Yeah, he's only played in the fall, he's only played this event, Vega. He's only played three times. He's only played three times this fall. And he's, he's got he's a, made a T2, a T13, and a T10. Yeah, but he was playing college golf this year. <laughs> he, so, also, like, he also yeah. has a European tour win. He was great at the Ryder Cup. I have a feeling this guy's good at golf. Yeah. And you see it with the Sunday performances. What's the, the Sunday scoring average is oh, below 65. Well, last year, 62, 64. <laughs> this is what the, what do you call it? The uh, pros pro? You know, like this is the how you have a long career on the PGA Tour is you step up on Sundays, whether you're in contention or not. You play great on Sunday and you move your way up to you move your way up into a a top 10 finish. And that's exactly what he's done. Um, But I guess he he had 60. Oh, yeah. 62 at Shriner, 68 at Sanderson, 67 at Wyndham. A 63 at the John Deere Classic. You know, you, you don't have to have your best stuff, but you go shoot around like that on Sunday and it's a nice paycheck and you're keeping your job and you're staying in elevated events and you're keeping your world golf ranking up and um, all those things start to happen. And although he's not there now, with with Sunday performances like that, he will be there very soon. It's, it's impressive. Since turning pro, Patrick, he has played... Th- 13 events around the world. Uh, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine top 25s. Uh, and actually, it should really only be 12 events because I'm counting the Ryder Cup. He has a win. He was 
great at the Ryder Cup. Uh, his last handful of starts are a T10 here, T13, runner-up, Ryder Cup, win at the Omega Masters, T4 at the Czech Masters, T14 at the Wyndham Championship. He has basically done like, uh, what what more could you do in your first dozen starts as a professional? A lot of a lot of long time PGA Tour players shaking in their boots right now. We we talk about oh how how is Ludwig only ninety fifth right now? He 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 had a better season this past couple of months than pretty much <laughs> Lucas, half Lucas Glover. Like this might I was thinking I was thinking this might be better than Lucas Glover. Right, because Glover made all his hay in six starts. He won two of them. They were back to back. Ludwig won one and was great at the right. Like I don't know, man. This might this might be a better run than Lucas Glover. It's it's been a lot of fun to watch, and you throw in kind of the Rocket Mortgage Classic too. He had the first two days with Luke Donald. He opened with an eight under round there, and people started going bananas. And Luke Donald comes to him. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna need to see." A little more from you can you come play on the dp world tour he's like okay hold my beer <laughs> boom t4 at the czech masters win at the omega european masters he held the 54 hole lead at the bmw pga championship by two wasn't able to convert there and then has a great rider cup alongside hovland and just as mowing through the field there at uh you know this fall in the fedex cup fall and like greg said the sunday performances have been great he snuck into a playoff there in mississippi I think that's some great experience under his belt. And it's just been really, really fun to watch. I mean, there it seems like you could make an argument early on in his career, you know, all of 60 days ago that the putter sometimes would let him down. But he's rolling the rock great this fall. And, uh, yeah, he'll be inside the top 125. He'll be in the Players' Championship. Masters invitations going to be soon to follow for sure. I um, hasn't played in a major yet. I'm 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 foaming at the mouth, Greg. I've got I've I've just could not be more in on this. It's um, it's going to be a fun ride to watch because I I see all the makings of a you know lot like like a, a top twenty official world golf ranking for twenty years kind of a player, right? The which is really saying something. And and I would imagine much of this career will be inside, well inside that top 20. Um, but even players like Rory McIlroy have their slips and they end up 18th in the world after a little bit of a bad run. Uh, but it's, it's a sign of someone with great longevity. Uh, we've seen him do it at various styles of golf course. That doesn't seem to matter. Now, I guess long and straight works everywhere. But, but even here, we talked about it on Monday, Rick. Does this take away? Does this golf course take away his advantage? Because there's no difficulty off the tee. I kind of think it. I mean, he's so good everywhere else. But if this place was a birdie fest and you also had to drive it well, he would have probably won by a thousand shots. Right. So when we get to majors, which we haven't seen him in, it's kind of he's kind of built for him. <laughs> yeah, what's what's the what's, what's really the fun. hardest? Uh, course he's played wentworth is yeah, that like probably right what was the winning score there? well he he did play pro because he did play api mm, that's right t24 at the api yep oh right 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 yeah before he, but he he's, a, he's in college mm -hmm. literally literally yeah. like that's in march you know he's not even <laughs> he hasn't even locked up pga tour u by that point yikes yeah, he's getting ready for spring break, and he's like, ah, I got to go to Bay Hill. Yeah. <laughs> Should we do spring break in Orlando? It's kind, yeah. of, a, it's kind of a problem like that. It's That's scary, man. That's scary. Yeah. <sighs> and so uh, when the golf courses get more difficult, I think it just it, it plays into his advantage even more. And those tend to be the bigger events, you know, the events you really want to win. Um and you'd love to win them all, but the the big the big ones are on more difficult golf courses. So he's he's scary for everybody else. Uh, let me just open this up, gents. Throw out a couple of items here. If there's anything else we want to talk about before recapping the best bets, uh, Akshay finished T10 
We mentioned Bo Hostler uh, holds his spot there. That was thanks to a, a, a T15. Good performance by Will Gordon, T15, just kind of going through some of the names that we've we've talked about this week. And then uh, we did uh, obviously get a chance to speak with a with, uh, friend of the pod, Michael Block, recently. He finished, unfortunately, last. Cam Young, T54. Anything in there you want you to chat about? Um, Will Gordon, <laughs> we were big on Rick on Monday. No, you were, and then you I talked was. me into it, and that, right. and you were back to back weeks. Absolutely correct, absolutely correct. But this is so disappointing. I mean, he's right there. He he should have been in this last group, and on Sunday he, well, his last nine on Sunday, on Saturday, and his first nine on Sunday is thirty seven thirty eight. I mean, we talked about uh, <laughs> we, we talked about not surviving ten pars in a row. He shoots eighteen consecutive holes over par. So, I mean, in one sense, it's great to finish t fifteen, but um, boy, that was a disappointing t fifteen. Those eighteen holes, he lost seven shots to the field in those eighteen holes. So, imagine, imagine if it was just one round in which he lost seven strokes to the field. It would be one of them. It would just be a horrific. A horrific round that's what he did but he did it over two days and so if it's if, if he plays those 18 holes even to the field he's tied he's 25 time. under you know you make a birdie and you know make an extra birdie in there maybe <laughs> yeah you win that's wild so anyway i uh i personally need to see something from one cameron young mm opens oh. he pitched a perfect game on thursday 14 fairways 18 greens, seven under and then he follows it up with a nice cozy two over 74 moving day arrives <laughs> after he's lucky to make the cut boom even par 72 and then he backs it up sunday teases you just a little bit with a bogey free eight under 64. That, that's what I hate. Just enough to keep me interested. A 65 on Thursday, a 64 on Sunday. And this guy just keeps so it's a bologna it. sandwich. That's what I call that. It's a complete bologna sandwich <laughs> this week from Cam Young. He's uh in a very strange place. I mean, he's obviously top 50 and he's said he'll be in all the majors and play great in the majors last year, but his rookie year was sensational and his sophomore year was kind of a drop off. And yeah. you wonder, Greg, you know how it works. Defenses adjust to you in your second year. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. And in it's golf, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. But what, what is Cam Young for real? You know, is there too much hype from his rookie year? Is this just a little bit of a rough patch right now? You know, where are we? I don't know. I don't know where we are. I, I so he may be a little overinflated in our perception of him at this point. Um, and if that's true, he's still a top fifty player and a wonderful player. But maybe our expectations are too high. Are you uh, cutting the rate or what? We're just holding steady after this Fed meeting. If he's overinflated, what are what are you doing as Jerome Powell to cut <laughs> cut inflation of Cam Young? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of letting natural forces play out. Uh, right? the invisible let the hand. Cycle, let, yeah, let the business cycle run its course. The more that I, uh, you know, meddle the worst these things can get. So I'm going to stay out of the way. I'm, I'm going to invest in Ludwig and see if it trickles down to Cam Young. That's my, uh -huh. my you're plan. going trickle, you down, know, trickle down. Uh, to uh, shout out to Reagan. Oddly enough, the invisible hand won Adam Scott, not related. <laughs> That's right. Uh, okay. Well, I had one more. Oh, I did have one more nugget. So, we mentioned it earlier, Adam Long hit every single fairway this week. So uh, via PGA Tour comms just a couple minutes ago, Adam Long becomes the first player with a 100% driving accuracy over four rounds in a PGA Tour event since Brian Clark, remember him, did it mm. in 1992 at the Memorial. Rick, I think what makes wow. this that even more impressive is based off that same tweet. It was the 1992 Memorial Tournament presented by Workday. Yeah, which and Workday was founded in 2005. Yeah, which, <laughs> preach, Patrick. Preach, baby. 
just <laughs> unbelievable. Is, That's in the record books forever. No one's going to be able to touch Brian Clark. <laughs> one of the most sham things in golf is that the retroactive tournament names just obscene. It's uh, a very unique thing, but more, you know, the retroactive tours as well. Mm. Um, are just it's funny, especially it's one thing if it goes back like a couple of years, you know. It, but when you start going back to 1992, yeah, it's you like that's a, just a different. It, it's the same event, but it's a, you know, it's diff. It was different then. You don't remember Jason Gore winning all those Corn Fairy Tour events, or you don't remember <laughs> like you know what I mean, like right, like, how, right, like that. He was in called the web.com or don't call it. Yeah, the Nike tour. Don't call it anything like that. And I get, I do get where it comes from. So yeah, it comes from them sell. Yeah, so do I. They sell it to the sponsor and the, and they say, listen, any mention of it ever is going to be yours. And it's just right. It's just insane. But I digress. Any other Cabo nuggets before we recap our best bets? Going once. Going twice. Nah. A lot of celebs down there, though. Which, you know, JR, the Golden Bear, JT, Timberlake, that is. JR. Smith. Oh, J I thought I was like, whose initials are JR? Literally JR Smith. Yes. Mm -hmm. JR well, Smith. We also have Justin Rose. Not there. Uh, there was somebody else I saw, too. Oh, God. I can't remember. Michael Block, probably. Blocky was there. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we are going to recap our best bets. Not good for me, but one of the parlays did indeed cash. We'll get to that after a quick word from our partners. An NWSL semifinal Sunday you'll never forget. With an icon leading the Shield winners against a legend who's hanging up her boots. And a budding star looking for back-to-back -back championships against a squad determined to give their captain a grand finale. All on CBS Sports Network. We are back. We are back. And it is time to recap our best bets, which as always are brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every moment more. I had a bad week. I did not get my finishing position correct, uh, which was Cam Champ top 20. Ludwig did not win. Taylor Pendrith did not win. They both finished inside the top 15. And uh, I have to have my matchup struck from the record because uh, Chad Ramey withdrew like an hour before the tournament. I think he did it on Wednesday night. So that's a that's a push. Callum Taron over Chad Ramey is a push, which Greg, honestly, probably good because Callum Taron missed the cut. Yeah. Um, so it worked out. It's not all red across the board there. Yeah, I know no green, but at least it's not a total sweep. You got to You walk out of there with a half a point. I get my 50 bucks back, which is which is which is nice. Now, uh, we did sweep the rest of the finishing positions. Patrick and Mark had Bo Hostler top 20. Kyle had Ludwig top 10. So Patrick, uh, congratulations there. That's not going to be your only victory, but you do pad a little bit of cash in the finishing position market. Look, I'm really happy that I could lead Mark to the promised land because it's been yeah. it's been tough for See, our South African brother here. You and... usually he usually drags everybody down. So you've been mm -hmm. able you guys have found the combination that when you team up, that might be what that might be what we need. Yeah, exactly. It could be scary. A potential lethal duo, me and Mark Immelman. Uh, I'm not sure he would sign off on that, but uh <laughs> We'll see. Uh, we'll see. I'll get to him. Yeah, we'll see. We'll just wear him down. Uh, best bets, please. Kelly Craft top 40 for myself. No. Mark's parlay of oh, Grillo killed me. Grillo, Putnam, List, and Suh to make the cut. That did not come through. Kyle got us a winner with Ludwig inside the top 20. Doubled down on Ludwig. But Patrick, it comes through. The positivity parlay because Bo Hostler, JJ Spawn, and KH Lee all found their way to the weekend. Congratulations. Thank you. It got sweaty there a little bit on Friday with uh, KH Lee, I think, made a double bogey. So did JJ Spawn. And I, I hadn't watched much of the coverage. I'm like, what the hell are these guys doing making double bogeys around this course where everyone's shooting like 64? But they showed a little resolve. 
showed some guts and another positively parlay comes through to FanDuel. You think about FanDuel, their old Patrick's gone. He's with a different network who's going to have their own gambling uh, platform. I think we bring me in. We boost this plus 105 to a plus 125. We give the people what they want, and uh, the positivity keeps on rolling. Not only did he victory lap his win, he also tried to get himself a job there. Right. That was pretty Has good. the positivity parlay ever lost? Oh, that's a great, great question, Greg. Has um, it ever won before this week? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, is that, that's what I meant to say. Was this the first win? <laughs> no, no. In the fall, this is event number five. We are, yeah, five. we are two for five. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, I think that I think that's right. Actually, all and, right. And, and the and the third, what? Oh, I, maybe I wasn't on a Tuesday show. The other one was a Ryder Cup bet that I hit. Well, I mean, yeah, all... and this actually goes back. So, so it goes back further than the fall. But the end of the other season was Patrick just. Po- the reason this started is he was so deep in the hole, right? That he was firing up like twenty-five to one parlays <laughs> to yes. see if he could get it all Chased back it. <laughs> by the end of the year. So we kind of write those off, I think, at this point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. Rick, Rick taught Rick taught me this really cool uh, theory that he learned from being in Vegas all these years, and I tried to apply it. And there yeah. were a lot of heartbreaks in there, a lot. But what's the what's the theory? You can make it all back in just one bet. It only takes one bet. Yeah, just keep yeah. chasing. Rick, what is that called? When you yeah you keep uh, on. I, I want to call it the Nightingale, but it's not called the Nightingale. It's called the something uh, Martingale system. I was going to say Schrodinger's theory. I don't even know what that is. But the Martin said addiction. So the Martingale, <laughs> the, yes, the Martingale for those who would be like, okay, you put ten bucks on blackjack, you lose, so now your next bet's twenty, and then it's forty, then uh, it's eighty. Uh, <laughs> you can't lose, you know, infinity number of bets in a row. Now, obviously, Las Vegas casinos have they are aware of this. One, it would require an infinite bankroll, but number two. Uh, that is why there are things called table maximums. So uh-huh. if you ever did try to pull this off and you, you, your next bet needed to be, you know, $10,000 and you're in a, a table max, it's five, that, like you can't do it. That's why table maximums exist. Very. And you never know what you're going to learn in a day. There you yeah. go. Interesting and look, theory and interesting. I mean, it's, it, it. it's not, <laughs> I guess it's not wrong, but <laughs> you, if you have, if you have unlimited amounts of money, I guess you could yes. you could do it successfully. And then if you win, you start over, right? So so if you go if you bet ten, lose, go to twenty, uh, and win, now you're up ten, right? So mm-hmm. now now you start over ten again, then twenty forty. You okay? I'll start over. Actually, you'd have to you'd have to count your you'd have to go more than that because you'd have to count your losses. So so if you lose the twenty and the ten, yeah, you'd have to yeah you'd have to keep keep adding it up. So Greg, that's that's why these bets are only <laughs> around even money right now towards towards the playoffs because oh, you won I'll, recently. Correct, because I'm in the black currently. But in the playoffs, we were ripping like top ten parlays, twenty to one, right, and, and just missing, like just like uh, Colin Morikawa just missed a putt on the seventy second hole, stuff like that. And so the yeah. ball is just bouncing my way in the fall. There, there was there was one that like he really got screwed on. That would have got him even. I don't remember the exact situation. Maybe it was Morikawa late, but it. Was, I remember thinking, "Wow, that stinks." I remember <laughs> some like all like all of them. seven to nine player all make the cut <laughs> bets. The window was. I, I, remember, I went like five yeah. or six there. Oh, yeah. that Justin, one too. Yeah, Justin right. saw. I unstarred him from the PGA Tour app. That's what <laughs> happened. Because yeah. I was, he had such a good first round. I'm like, okay, we don't have to worry about him. Let's just focus on Justin Thomas. And then Ooh. I'm getting like tweets. It's like, right. oh my god, bogey. But I'm like, who? Like Justin Thomas. Justin saw. And I forgot <laughs> about him, and he missed the freaking cut on me. Yeah, that was so. Josh has them. We, I mean, he obviously keeps the spreadsheet for this. That was Horschel, Norin, Sub, Putnam, and Justin <laughs> Thomas to all make the cut at the Wyndham, and they all did except for Su after opening with like a sixty-six or whatever. Oh no, <laughs> for ten to one. <laughs> well, we're we're ahead of the game so far this year. So yeah. yeah. Well done. Well done. Um, also, make sure you're betting responsibly. That That is brought mm-hmm. to you by uh, FanDuel Sportsbook. Make every make every moment more. Give us a little subscribe. Leave us a five-star rating and review, like button, all that fun stuff, uh, because we are going to be rocking and rolling to 
Bermuda next week, gents. Oh, Bermuda, the RSM Classic. That's the fall swing. Then we'll have the Hero World Challenge. The Netflix Cup is somewhere in there. Then we're going to, who knows, the Grant Thornton co-ed event. I mean, there is golf to be played around the world, and we will be covering it. Anything else before we get out of here? Hey, hey Rick, uh, you want to maybe hang out the week of the Netflix Cup? Someone might be coming into town. Are you going to be there? Potentially, yes. Let me know. Okay. Let's Patty, Patty hits the road. If I if I got an opportunity to go out in Vegas with Patrick McDonald, could you imagine the scenario? I just – I, I cannot. We're going to put the Martingale to the test, baby. <laughs> oh, bring your cash, baby. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow Patty wow. on the road. I love it. <laughs> Patty, we, we need a uh, yeah, series of <laughs> – Look at this screenshot. <laughs> we need a, a series where we just vlog Patrick wherever he goes. Just like I go, I need the day to day, especially when he's on the road in Las Vegas. Oh, that, that <laughs> maybe sad. I should just drive out there, make a, make a whole road trip out of it. I will die. That is so funny. That is so funny. All right, well done. Um, big thanks to producer Josh who does all the hard work behind the scenes uh, Patrick McDonald you can find him on Twitter at amateur status you can find Greg at the real GFD uh, my handle is at Rick run good this has been the first cut we'll catch you next time